Hi, this is Pastor Coleman from the Triumphant Church of God in Durham. I hope you're staying safe. I want to take this opportunity to introduce to you a brand new segment, and it will be called Wednesday Wisdom. It will be an interactive Bible study, an interactive opportunity for you to ask questions, receive feedback from the Word of God. We're going to study the Word together and have a great time together. So I I hope to see you on Instagram. Please uh, join us on TTCOG Durham on our Instagram page. Looking forward to see you there, TTCOG Durham. And uh, it will be 8 p.m. on Wednesday, every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Looking forward to seeing you and interacting with you. May God bless you. Hello, and welcome to the Triumphant Church of God Durham broadcast. We are so happy that you've taken the time to join us today, and we pray that you will be blessed by today's service. God is moving in a dynamic way, and we are so excited to hear what our pastor is going to share with us. So I will see you in the sanctuary. May God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Good morning. I am so glad that you are here again this morning. Um, Last week, by the grace of God, we were able to reveal the mind of God concerning prayer. We dived deep into prayer and how to pray that you're able to get consistent results day in, day out. I I had requested that those of you that would like for us to pray for you or would like um, counsel or guidance or whatever it is regarding spiritual matters to reach out to us a lot of you reached out to us via text and through emails and we got all your emails and we responded to them we want to also give those of you um, the chance this morning that still wants to reach out to us our lines are open um, you can reach us via emails information will be on the screen um, our email is ttcogdurham at gmail.com T-T-C-O-G, Durham at gmail.com. Our pastors will be waiting to, to pray for you. Our pastors will be waiting to reach out to you. Regardless of, what, regardless of what it is you're going through, reach out to us. And by the grace of God, we will be able to pray for you and pray with you. And, and God of heaven will be able to come down and meet you at the point of your needs. Please reach out to us. Again, our email is T-T-C-O-G, Durham at gmail.com. God bless you, and I pray that this service will meet you at the point of your need. Have a great day. We are so thankful this morning, God, that we're in your presence. We are so thankful this morning, God, that we have this opportunity to come before you. You are desiring truth with the inward parts of us. Worship that comes from a heart that is true changes the lives of men, women, boys, and girls. Because worship is a lifestyle. Worship comes from within. Worship is not an outward appearance, but worship is something that comes from down within. We are worshiping you today, God, because we know When the wise men looked for you beyond their borders, they looked for the Savior, and they wanted to come and bow and worship Him. When they found you, they worshipped you, knowing that you were the King of Kings. So we worship you today, and we lift your name up on high. We raise our hands, we lift our voice, and we give you praise, because you're worthy to be praised. I worship you, Almighty God. Let us.
us worship him today. There is none like you. Hallelujah. I worship you. Oh, Prince of Peace. Thank you, Jesus. For you are my such a time as this. 
He gave you an opportunity at life. Make the most of every minute that God has given you. Because he is wonderful. He is faithful and he is true. And that's why we bless him today. Because he's been so good to us. Hallelujah. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. If you believe that today. Sing it with us one more time. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving. I will bless thee, O Lord. Come on, let's bless him again.
can't you do? What won't you do? Nothing impossible. Nothing impossible. What can't you do? What won't you do? Nothing impossible with our God. You do not lie, you do not fail. What is hard for you to do, it doesn't exist, though. It can never ever exist, though. You do not lie, you do not fail. What is hard? It can never, ever, ever exist According to your knowledge and your will for me What you say you do, I just need to align oh, Because you are not a man that changes your mind oh. You do not lie, you do not fail What is hard for you to do, you know they exist oh. It can never You do not lie, you do not fail What is hard for you to do, it doesn't exist oh. It can never ever exist oh. You do not lie, you do not fail What is hard for you to do, it doesn't exist It can never ever ever exist You do not lie, you know the exchange oh. What is hard for you to do, it doesn't exist, oh. It can never, ever exist, oh. See. Hallelujah, now go finish from my mouth, oh. His goodness and mercy see the flow from my life, oh. Finish, it no go finish, finish from my mouth. Hallelujah, no go finish, it no go finish, finish from my mouth. Hallelujah, no go finish, it no go finish, it no go finish from your mouth. Good morning, everyone. I am so elated to come to you this morning. I am just excited about what God is doing in the Triumphant Church of God, Durham. This morning, I am here to introduce the speaker for today. It is my great pleasure and my great honor to present the speaker to you today. Last week, we heard a powerful word from our minister, Jude Oakley, and this week, our hearts will be touched and blessed once again. This speaker that's coming to us is a woman of God. It is a woman who is passionate about God, about the things of God, about how God has been good to her, how God has brought her through many dangers, toils, and snares. And today, she's here to share with us the word of truth. I am so excited because this woman is a woman who walks with me day after day. She is my, 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 my companion. She is someone, she's the mother of my four children, the grandmother of our, our three grandchildren. She has been a blessed woman and I thank God for her. And I present unto you this morning, the woman of God who's gonna share the word of God. It will be none other than my wonderful wife, Lady Anna Maria Coleman. But before she comes, let us pray. 
that God would touch everyone viewing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today for your daughter, the servant who you have chosen for such a time as this. Bless our heart. Let the anointing flow. Let God be God even this morning, that when she is finished delivering what you have given to her, hearts will be touched, moved, and changed, and souls will be saved. Lord, let it be impactful, and we'll give you thanks, and we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. I present unto you none other than Lady Anna Maria Coleman. God bless you all. Listen to the word of God. Hi, good morning, and welcome to the Triumphant Church of God, Durham. This is Sister Coleman, and I will be sharing today's message with you, one of hope and encouragement. And I pray that you will be blessed by the message. Today, I am on day 30 of a Keeping It Real Mind, Body, and Soul and Spirit restoration boot camp for the last 31 days or for 31 days I have committed myself to participating in a restoration boot camp one that was divinely given to me as a challenge from God to say how much do you love me and through this time it has allowed me to participate with people from around the world, people far and near that would take place each day, participating in things that, to, things that will encourage us and build us up as women and men of God but not only men of God and women of God, but all people. This is a restoration of our mind, of our body, and our spirit. It was intended for us to take control, to develop habits, new habits, and also build and exercise our faith with God. It is intended to shift the way our mind thinks, to change what we hear and what we see, both negative and positive, but also to change the attitude and the thoughts within ourselves. It was also to build new ways of taking care of our body putting into practice some of the things that we have put aside because they might be challenging to us by physical activity, walking, riding a bicycle, just spending time doing things outside where God intended us to participate and do life things. But he also wanted us to look at what we put in our bodies, the foods, the word, and other things that we might have surrounding us. But most importantly, he wanted us to look at our spirit, the spirit that has been crushed over the years through many different toils and tears that have taken us to a place that has caused us to be broken. But he wants us to build our spirit in him that we might look to him more deeply in what we are doing. This requires us to open the word, speak the word, read the word, live the word. But in order for us to do that, we have to build a relationship, a relationship with God, a relationship with God that will build us up, that we might have a relationship with ourself, doing the activities, restoring our mind, restoring our bodies, but most importantly, restoring relationships between people that have been broken down and developing new ones with new people that we interact with. This 
is all to build hope and faith in a time where there seems to be none right now because we're living in a time of a pandemic where we're suffering financial needs and other issues of death and, and, and things that have brought our life right into a, a complete halt and chaos. But God wants us to be restored during this time and we must take the time to build ourselves up for the work that he has for us to do. When I look at when I started, I didn't have a clue what I was going to do. I didn't understand the magnitude of what it was that God was calling me to do. And as I walked through my process and as we were instructed each day, we were to write a daily goal and, and share journaling of our exercises each and every single day, whether it be spirit, mind or body. And my first journal entry said, today I am nervous as I embark something new, which I have never done before. I am not sure if I know what I am doing and I am planning to lead people for the next 31 days. The thought to fail personally is overwhelming, but I will try trusting in God. I will accept to be accountable, not only for myself, but also for those who are willing to share the journey with me. Today, I dare to be different. My message today will walk us through basically what the last 31 days has taught us. We have had overwhelming responses from people everywhere. We've had people from the United Kingdom join the conference line. We've had people from the United States. We've had people from Brooklyn, Connecticut, Washington, DC. And we've even had people in Canada, all over Toronto, Kitchener, Mississauga, and our hometown, Durham. We give God thanks for everyone that took the time to follow us during this 30 days. We've had such an awesome experience. We've had people on WhatsApp. We've had people on Instagram as well as Facebook following us. But only God knows who has participated in the boot camp because the, the number of people that have been reached in this opportunity has been so big that it's bigger than I can ever know but God gets all the glory in it during this time the last month we have learned so much about many things that the Bible had to share with us and here are just a, a small list of the things that we've encountered and shared about we learned about confidence we learned about mercy. We learned about commitment. We learned about devotion. We learned about obedience. We learned about encouragement. We learned about hope. We learned about strength. We learned about salvation. We learned about faith. We learned about restoration. We learned about redemption. We learned about relationship. We learned about refreshing refreshing we re we learned about persistence we learned about our attitudes we learned how to surrender we learned of all the possibilities we learned about what is what we speak we learned about love we learned about being stable we learned about sacrifice we learned about peace of mind we learned about steadfast. We learned about thoughts and feelings. We learned about immovable, about being immovable. We learned about the power and overcoming. We learned about living sacrifice. We learned about our mindsets. We learned about trust. We learned about the process of growing.
We learned about growth in us. We learned about willingness. We learned about grace. We learned about wisdom. We learned about humility. We learned about transparency. We learned about the changes that we will go through. We learned about the knowledge and the understanding. And in this time, we've learned so much about this season, this season in us that God has given us. Our scripture today is taken, taken from Ecclesiastics 3, from 1 to 12. And I'm just going to read this to you. To everything there is a season, a time to every purpose, understand the under the heavens. At a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up, that is which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to get and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time to war and a time of peace. What profit hath he that worketh in the that wherein he laboreth? I have seen the travail which God hath given to the sons of man to be exercised in it. He that hath made everything beautiful in, in his time, also he hath set the world in their heart so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. I know, that, I know that there is no good in them, but for a man to rejoice and to be good in his life. Amen. The word is rich and it's been blessed. In this time of season, when we have experienced a season, it is a stage of transition in our life that can be good and bad. It is an experience that can present obstacles and challenges to force us to grow, to grow at the same time, and it can also be a smooth stroll in a, in, in, in a park. But these seasons come without prejudice, and they happen at at the least convenient time and unexpectedly and from one minute to the other we might be in a position where we're on a mountain and be on top of the world and in the next minute be deep in a valley there is no time for any specific season there is no specific time for any specific season but every season has a time in which we must go through and we will learn from that in that season. But for every season and its time, there is a purpose for it and for everything. There is a time where we must look at things and know that what we are experiencing is only for a time there is a beginning and an end but for the length of it we are not sure that is what god leaves to the mystery of it as we walk in our life we understand that 
we have no real measure of what we are going to experience. And if we compare our time to God's time, there's nothing that we could ever know about the two. But we know this for a fact that there is a transition during this time, a time of knowledge, a time of understanding, a time where things become a little bit pressured, that we will learn from each experience, that we will make the most of what we are learning and where we are to place our trust is what we must know, that we must put our trust in God and that we will be, he will determine the length it will take and the time that we will spend in that season. As we are growing, we know that there is a purpose for every season. And the time that it takes is a transition. But God has made it very clear to us that in this time and season of transition, God has made everything beautiful. And that is the purpose one of his purposes that everything is made beautiful whether it was good or bad in our experience it was for our good and it was made to be beautiful god has blessed us deliberately he has made everything beautiful everything is appropriate and it's there to help us it is it's there to bring us through what we are going through it appears to be negative to us sometimes but it's meant to be taken as a positive even though our enemies and we do have enemies that hurt us they too are a blessing they are for a purpose and we are commanded to love our enemies because they are valuable to us because they teach us and they help us to realize what we desperately need. God has also planted eternity in a man's heart. There is a quality about life that can never be explained. A man that has a happiness in him, a man that has been fed a man that has been clothed, a, a man that has been sheltered and is warm. Still, regardless he possesses these things, he will always be searching for something more. Always seeking and crying out for more. And that one thing that can never be replaced is that deep call, the deep call in the human heart in the spirit of man that is yearning for the God of God. Yearning for God to seek his face and that God has made that part of his plan that we would always, no matter how happy we are in the things that we are experiencing, that we'll always have this emptiness and the emptiness can only be filled by God, the one true living God. God has also placed something else in us. This ability to experience all of the wonders of his love, but in all of the magnitude of it, that we'll never ever have understanding of what God really intends for our lives. He the scripture tells us people cannot see the whole scope of God's work from beginning to end. And as we are growing in our knowledge, we realize we cannot solve the mysteries of God. And we try to attain the sovereign wisdom of God, but that is not possible. We must grow trusting in the wisdom of God and having faith in him. God, while living out our life, 
and experiencing the things of our life. The last thing that God has put in our life as a purpose, he wants us to be happy. He wants us to enjoy ourselves for as long as we can, doing things for his glory, living life the way he intended us to live it and to be happy and joyful while doing it. God has put some true enjoyment as a gift for our life from God. The secret is that the knowledge of God is that it's in the relationship with Him. This relationship that produces the enjoyment that we need. God delights in our human nature and He delights in our enjoyment. And God only wants us to be happy. Happy doing things that are pleasing to Him, but also having enjoyment while doing them. In my closing, I just want to say that we cannot ever know the true answer of what life has in store for us, but we know that life has brought has been brought to us for a purpose, for us to have a season of time of growing, growing in things that we will never understand why we have to experience some some of the things that we go through, through the mountains and the valleys through the heartbreak and the joy. But for every single thing, there is a purpose. There is a reason and there's a time that we must endure these things. But we must seek to know God's face and we must seek for his love. We must seek for that filling of that emptiness because as much as we can find the pleasures in life, it's only God that can fill that void. And as we move on in our journey, we must use what we learn from God. We must trust him in every revelation that he gives us in the wisdom, in the areas that we can't understand, but we also must trust and understand that he is there in those times and that he will also give us that divine purpose in which the season, in each season that we are living and as we transition through every time throughout our life. May God bless you today. I pray that you have been blessed by the word today. And I pray that you find something that you can cling on to, that you will find time to be in the keeping it real in our life. Life is about restoration. Life is about restoring ourselves. God wants us to restore what has been broken from the beginning of time our minds need to be re restored our bodies need to be restored and God was just wants us to restore our spirit because it has been broken down but in all of that not only do we be selfish and keep it for ourselves but we must help those that don't understand there are people everywhere everywhere in the world hit by the pandemic and on a regular day that are just suffering in silence in a broken mind in a broken body and a broken spirit and god has brought it to us that we must look to his word that we will be filled with his glory that we will be filled with restoration in our mind that we will have peace of mind release of everything that has broken down in our body that our mind, body, and spirit will be restored to its fullest capacity and that we will be a blessing to those in the world as we reach those through the gospel of Jesus Christ in our world that all shall come to restoration of mind, body, and spirit. Once again, may God bless you and may God rise and shine and be a light in your life Amen. Hello. I hope you enjoyed today's service. The message was on point and impactful. I enjoyed it myself. would like to give you the opportunity to support the ministry. For those of you out there that would love to support um, what we do and what God is doing in our lives. One of the ways to support the ministry is through our YouTube page by going to the About section and clicking on tithes and offering. 
Another way that you can support is by mailing a check to P.O. Box 41001 Ambele P.O. Pequene, Ontario L1V0G3 Or you can also support by sending an e-transfer to TTCOG Durham at gmail.com All this information will be on the screen. Thank you for worshipping with us. We hope to see you next week. God bless you. Hi, and thank you for joining us today. We pray you are blessed by today's service and hope to see you again soon. Please subscribe for a notification for our future broadcasts. May God bless you until next week.